I'm about to tell you the story of an artist who's had major career retrospective exhibitions, an artist whose work is in the permanent collections of some of the most important museums in the world. And if you've watched any of my content in the past, you would know this is typically information I leave for the end. But I wanted you to know this now because this is an artist whose life is filled with trials, tribulations, and tragedies. And if you're like me, like most people on this planet, who has struggled, faced incredibly difficult challenges, my hope is that you can look at and remember Ava Hess's triumphs rather than the tragedies. She can serve as an inspiration to us all. So let's talk about it. Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher West, and here I like to share my passion for modern and contemporary art and design. And today I want to talk about an artist who has fascinated me since I first saw her retrospective exhibition in San Francisco in 2002, the artist and sculptor Ava Hesse. And speaking of sculptures, have you been to the mattress factory in Pittsburgh? Pro tip, they don't make mattresses there anymore, but if you like artists like Kusama and James Terrell, you definitely need to go. And that's a heck of an idea. I'm gonna start a coffee cup sponsorship. Genius. But let's get back to Eva Hesse. Hesse was born in 1936 in Germany, and she was Jewish. And when she was two years old, her parents sent her and her sister to the Netherlands to escape Nazi Germany. After six long months, the family finally reunited, and in 1939, emigrated to New York City. As the war ended, one would hope there might be this sense of optimism. But in 1945, her parents divorced, and in 1946, her mother committed suicide. I told you it was going to get rough, but bear with me. This is one tough girl, determined to make a name for herself. She studied art, interned at Seventeen Magazine, and ended up furthering her education at Cooper Union in New York, ultimately receiving her BA from Yale while studying under Joseph Albers. So by 1960, at the age of 24, she was well informed on the movements of recent art history. Abstract expressionism, color field painting, minimalism. In fact, she started out as an abstract painter. And we can see in her early work the influences of abstract expressionism like these untitled works from 1960. It may not be immediately recognizable, but she is starting to push back against the totally non-representational paintings of her predecessors. Here she is slowly reintroducing the figure. And it wouldn't be long until she began to expand into 3D works of art. She also, at this time, married the sculptor Tom Doyle. And in 1965, they moved to Dusseldorf a move she was not excited about. But she jumped in and immersed herself in the German art scene, which at the time was dominated by abstract sculpture. In Ring Around a Rosie, in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and made during her time in Germany, Hesse constructed protruding forms of cloth and electrical wire atop a masonite board. Here too she references the body and described this work as looking like a breast and a penis. In 1966, she would move back to New York, divorce her husband, and dedicate herself full-time to sculpture. With Hang Up in the collection of the Art Institute of Chicago, we literally see the painting coming off the wall, protruding into the gallery space. Hesse considered this among her most important works because it was the first to achieve the level of absurdity or extreme feeling she intended. So what was Hesse trying to accomplish? This piece was produced at the height of minimalism in the pop art movement, but belonged to neither. Hesse would say, I am interested in solving an unknown factor of art in an unknown factor of life. She wasn't interested in making art that was a part of any movement or in vogue at the time. She was making the work she needed to make. And she began experimenting with different materials. Materials like fiberglass, latex, metal, rubber. They sometimes remind us of minimalist sculpture and other times something very different. And unlike some other artists we've discussed, Hesse was being recognized for her work during her lifetime. 
and during the late 1960s, she was likely at the apex of her career. She was praised by the art critics for her first solo exhibition at the Fischbach Gallery in 1968. She was included in the prestigious annual exhibition at the Whitney Museum of American Art. And MoMA acquired two pieces from her repetition series. But this professional success would be coupled with personal tragedy. Hesse would undergo three surgeries in 1969 and 1970 to try and defeat the brain tumor that lived inside her. She would pass away in 1970, and it seems to me her artwork mimics her tragic life. She was using modern materials, materials that hadn't been tested against time, like oil paint, and some of these materials just weren't meant to last. Plastic, latex, fiberglass, textiles, these are things that give conservationists nightmares. Hesse placed little attention on long-term preservation. Her focus was on the concept and the process of the art, how the materials would achieve her intent, not on how her art would last over centuries. And as a consequence, her sculptures are degrading at a rate that soon nothing will be left of the originals. Hesse stated in an interview in 1970, life doesn't last, art doesn't last. And she knew this fragility of life better than anyone. Although many museums have collected her work, it can be almost impossible to see one in person. Ironically, they are often left off view to try to preserve them for as long as possible. And although her life was cut off way too short, and a large portion of her work is deteriorating, what won't go away is her influence on future generations. Sculptors like Kiki Smith and Peter Coyne have been heavily influenced by Hesse's work. She was a seminal figure in the post-minimalism movement. This was a movement that was turning away from the impersonal nature of the grids and forms that define minimalism. An influence that still reverberates to this day as artists have returned to portraiture in more domestic personal scenes. So if you are fortunate to see one of these pieces in person, remember to stop and pause. Reflect on the fact that our lives too are fragile. And thank Ava for making such a big impact in such a short time. So what are your thoughts on Hesse? There's been a big debate about what to do with her works as they are deteriorating. If you have any thoughts on that, please leave them in the comments below. And I sincerely want to thank you for watching. If you could take a moment to like this video and subscribe to this channel, I would very much appreciate it. And if you like Hesse's work, I'll put a link up here to my video about Vito Acconci. He was another important figure in that post-minimalism movement. So thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Ciao!